March with me, Charles Ebuni. Globally, the campaign mounted on diseases like HIV and AIDS, malaria and tuberculosis gives you the impression that the world suffers from no any other disease. Absolutely wrong as you capture the disease affecting you, especially leprosy and other disease caused by poverty. My guest today runs one of the most important associations in the world which is concerned with the elimination of leprosy and poverty caused disease globally. I'm talking about Fermaid, a Swiss-based almost sexagenarian organization focusing exclusively on making a world where poverty-related diseases are history. Is that possible? My speakers today are a politician, a star, and a technician. Can they deliver to the rest of the world? <laughs> Swiss Member of Parliament, Ignacio Cassis, welcome to Globe Watch. Thanks a lot. Hello. Let me just go straight to the point. You are just coming from the East region of Cameroon right. to cross-check the activities of aid agency, uh, FEMID. What did you see on the ground insofar as leprosy and other uh, poverty-caused diseases are related? Well, the, the first thing uh, I was impressed on uh, uh, was a leprosy patient this morning. I really saw a 18 old boy, 18 years old boy, having uh, already uh, late damages of uh, leprosy on the uh, hand fingers and the foot fingers, which is quite impressive because uh, we don't know that in Europe. We we never we never seen such patients, and I was told there were no uh, actually no leprosy at all uh, more in uh, in uh, in Cameroon. So it's really uh, surprising to uh, just to, to discover such patients uh, among the poorest population of the Baca villages. So this is what the experience this morning. The, 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 the last year, the report which uh, Fermit published is that they assisted about something of about 62,000 leprosy patients globally. Mm. Do you think that as a politician, they are doing a fair job? Well, I think um, we were maybe uh, to. Um, we, we tried to, uh, to put leprosy too early away from the political agenda. We thought leprosy is a solved problem, but I don't think so. Uh, during this travel, I discovered many problems with leprosy, and uh, according to our information, they shouldn't exist, but I saw them with my eyes, so they exist. And uh, I think the politics should put this issue in, uh, in the agenda again, and to try to fight uh, uh, against it. And Fairmate, the uh, Swiss as association working here in Cameroon, is doing quite a, go a good job. You said they are doing quite a good job, and you said that maybe politicians have neglected it globally, because if you look Absolutely. at if you look at the, the reports, Ebola, HIV and AIDS, malaria, tuberculosis, yes. those are the global health concerns we hear across the world, and leprosy is like an abandoned issue. Uh, how is that going to influence your legislative agenda back in Switzerland? Well, I'll try <coughs> to, uh, to, inform, to inform the government about the work uh, that has been done here in uh, Cameroon by Fermet. But uh, I uh, remember you that Fermi is also active in India and that leprosy is a globally neglect neglected uh, tropical disease. And uh, I think we have to support the work of Fermi, of such NGOs working uh, especially in particular with uh, those neglect neglected tropical disease because it is not just leprosy, it is Buruli disease and other diseases caused by mycobacteria and uh, they are really neglected today. We are thinking about uh, uh, HIV, as you said, which is, which is quite a big problem, of course, and tuberculosis also. But uh, the uh, mycobacteria disease are also very frequent. So you, we have to you, fight you, you just said a while ago that they should be given support. What kind of support are you talking here? You are a lawmaker. Are you going to influence the passage of, of, of a bill that will specifically uh, 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 give a, a more global perspective to the issue of leprosy 
and other disease uh, caused by poverty, which the director of, of FEMID will be telling me shortly. What at the legislative level, how are you going to campaign? You are a very big politician in Switzerland. Well, of course, Switzerland cannot intervene in Cameroon because Cameroon is Cameroon and Switzerland. I'm talking of a global agenda. But Switzerland can intervene in the global agenda uh, and in particular in the WHO agenda. Uh -huh. So I will, I will speak to the Minister of Health, of course, back in Switzerland and tell him that uh, what, what, I've s what I've seen here in Cameroon and tell him to support the global agenda in the WHO uh, uh, setting uh, to support more this disease, uh, uh, the fight against those diseases everywhere in the world, included, included Cameroon. And the second way, as I said, uh, I'll try to, uh, make, uh, to, 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 to make happen some financial support from the Swiss government to the organization FAIRMED to allow them to do the very good uh, work they are doing in Cameroon. Technically, you are uh, a medical professional. Uh, you have a very large uh, medical experience uh, before entering parliament. Uh, you were at one time vice president of the Swiss Federation of, of, of Medical Doctors. Is my statistics it's are correct? It's correct, yes. Okay. Uh, with this uh, technical knowledge, how do you think a legislation to deal with leprosy and other disease uh, uh, caused by poverty can be coined, can be framed? First of all, you have to recognize that we have a problem. If you don't recognize that we have a problem, then uh, okay, the problem doesn't exist, but it exists as I saw it. The second, you have to have resources, uh, human workforces in, in health, healthcare professionals coming to those uh, very poor population and seconds to have means to have uh, drugs to have uh, diagnostic kits uh, to be sure to discover the people uh, 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 attended by the disease so uh, I get both both things are very important mm -hmm. uh, to have uh, uh, human and financial resources and to get them and look for them okay uh, financial resources are uh, un undeniably very I important in this episode you know that Globally, uh, everybody is talking of, of, of a kind of financial cobalt that the, 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 the global treasury is becoming empty. Uh, areas where leprosy and diseases which are caused by poverty globally uh, are in developing countries around the world and they, they have huge financial constraints. Mm. How yeah. are you going to help to mobilize resources? Just putting more political pressure. You know, we have uh, uh, amounts of money which have be which which has <coughs> which have to be divided among many diseases. There is a kind of competition among diseases. Absolutely. Uh, so much money for HIV, tuberculosis, and so on. And I guess in the last you, you have a global fund for malaria. You have yeah, a global course. fund for yes. HIV and AIDS yes. whatsoever. Do you think that <laughs> with what you have seen, I know that it's not only in Cameroon. Surely you are, you'll be making trips to Cote d'Ivoire. You'll be making trips to the Central African yes. Republic. Yes. You'll be making trips to, to 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 the Gambia, Sri Lanka, Nepal, where the story there is equally very catastrophic. Yes. Should that be a global fund for leprosy? Um, <laughs> You know, we had a global, a global uh, fight organization against leprosy, but this glo and, and, and it still exists. It is a federation of the national organization working against leprosy, among them Fairmate from Switzerland. But uh, what they are lacking of now, it's uh, of course, as you said, financial resources. And financial resources can be given if the political pressure is big enough. Which area of the world today is facing the greatest threat of leprosy and other diseases caused by poverty? <coughs> well, of course, Africa. I guess Africa and India. Both continents are very, <coughs> are very uh, uh, touched by, by, the, by those problems. And uh, of course, both need to have uh, some kind of support. What I don't want to do is just to have a top-down support, just putting them resources without uh, um, empowering the people to do themselves, to take themselves, to care themselves for the future. And um, what I'd like to do, it's exactly the opposite. It's to, do to, to enforce the people for caring themselves and for curing themselves. And uh, this is what, is, uh, what Fairmead is doing in Cameroon and in India. Okay, um, probably uh, the last question with you. You'll be going back to Switzerland and 
you will be talking to members of parliament, to your colleagues, and um, other stakeholders in Switzerland in, insofar as FEMID is concerned. What concretely will you tell them? Well, the first thing I would uh, tell them is, uh, look, FEMID exists. It is doing a good, great uh, work in Cameroon and in India. And we have to recognize that and to support it just to allow it to go further. This is the first thing I will do then to my colleagues and to the government. And the second thing is uh, to uh, speak to the health minister to, uh, uh, to, to make sure that he will try to make some pressure on the uh, global agenda in the WHO. You know, the WHO main seat is in Switzerland, uh, in Geneva, and uh, we have a close contact with them. Mm -hmm. So we'll try to, to influence them on that way. But much more we can do. We are, we are of course, uh, 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 a rich country, but we are a small country. We have to have, of course, many other countries willing to do the same in their countries to uh, influence the uh, politics of the WHO. And maybe the last things, of course, the ideal solution would be to have a, a rich foundation like the uh, Bill and uh, Melinda Gates Foundation to, get <laughs> to give some money, not just for HIV or for poliomyelitis, but also for for uh, leprosy and, and, and other mycobacteria diseases. Swiss Member of Parliament, Ignacio Cassis, thanks very much for accepting to be guest on Globe Watch from CRTV. Thank you a lot for the invitation and uh, good luck for the future. You're welcome. Thank you. After talking to a politician on what they think about leprosy and other diseases caused by poverty across the world, let us now talk to a technician on the field. My next guest on this program is the director of Fair Made and equally the president of the Federation of Associations dealing with leprosy globally. Um, uh, Rene Stehahil, welcome to Globe Watch. Thank you for the invitation. I believe, really. tell us quickly, how was the idea of FEMED born? The idea of FEMED born was actually initially uh, FEMED was a leprosy organization only dealing with leprosy. So uh, at the time when it was funded, uh, founded, the uh, people having leprosy were really the poorest of the poor in the world because they got a terrible disease where they will die and they will be segregated, they will be stigmatized, and they have no other option than, than to, to, have a, uh, to end their life in misery. So uh, it started like that, but in the meantime, there are treatments for leprosy. In the meantime, other diseases uh, cause poverty, and poverty causes other diseases. So the scope of our organization has much changed since then. Uh, how do you define a poverty-caused disease? A poverty-correlated disease is a disease that uh, is mainly found in countries where there is uh, poverty. Uh, it's a, a social problem. A social problem. Uh, poor people are more sick, and uh, sick people become poor. Mainly here, to get to to, to be poor is a, is a cause of uh, a bad health, of ha having a bad access to health, and to be sick is again a cause to become poor or to, to, to remain poor. Okay, uh, let me go to Sri Lanka, where uh, you, you have a very success story at the Hindala uh, 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 hospital uh, community. Uh, when I go to a country like Nepal, you'll be talking of, of, of a lady like Chandrawati. These are people who have been suffering from leprosy and they have you have been capable of, of communicating and providing assistance to these people. Tell me, how do you finally get to know that this person or this community has a huge leprosy problem and needs assistance? Huh, these are uh, two questions in one, or three questions in one. <laughs> <laughs> First, um, the Hendala Hospital, I'm not sure if this can be called a success, because there were mainly patients 
that have been infected before the multi-drug therapy has been uh, mm -hmm. discovered. Mm -hmm. So before the, the, the years we of We are 80s. talking about the Second World War period here. No, we're talking about uh, before 80, okay. 84, 85, sure, like sure, that. Sure. And before that, it was not able to, to treat efficiently uh, leprosy. So uh, people uh, getting treated treatment just before that, they are there with uh, very heavy mutilation uh, and uh, handicaps, as we saw at uh, 18 years old boy uh -huh. just today having that as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, in these hospitals, these are actually nowadays, luckily, the exceptions. These are people, uh, old age people, at, uh, uh, and uh, dying from uh, old age uh, uh, causes Absolutely. at the moment. Uh, now, the reasons why in some countries leprosy is more prevalent than uh, in others, we just don't know. We don't know. It's, uh, we just see that uh, mainly in India, also in Brazil and in Madagascar, these are the or Nepal are the main countries where leprosy you, you, is when, when I lead, When I read your 2013 report, you said that you, you had the best financial year mm. in the history of, of, of the association. Yes. Uh, why was 2013 considered the best financial year in the records of Fairmade? Because the income was the highest in the year. <laughs> That's the easy, the easy answer. Um, but I guess you want to know... What strategy did you use to get so much yeah, or yeah. so many resources? It was a combination of, of, uh, of uh, different, uh, different things. Uh, at the end, I think it's just recognition that we are doing a good work Mr. Director, uh, let us separate by uh, knowing from you, you have so many contacts, especially with the Belgian royalty. I've seen you with a few of them. How are you using your worldwide experience and your global contacts in so many important positions around the world to rally resources to make his, uh, leprosy and poverty caused diseases a history? Yes. Um, I'm the president of the International uh, Leprosy Federation, uh, as, uh, as uh, Honorable uh, Cassis already explained. And this is a, is a, a position where I can meet uh, in different countries, different people. But uh, I'm not uh, usually not dealing with royalties. Uh, this is not my scope. <laughs> this was at an occasion of, uh, of, uh, of a conference where uh, uh, the princess was inaugurating the conference. Okay. The president, uh, the director of FEMID and the president of the Federation of uh, Leprosy Associations globally, Rene Stehahi, thanks very much for accepting to be guest on Globe Watch and Thank wish you, you a safe return back to Switzerland. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. You are welcome. <laughs>
back in Switzerland, you should be a star. You are a public figure. Back yes. home, <laughs> there are very, uh, there are many of interviews and very of media uh, presents, uh, and they will write and talk about this. What I did here, mm -hmm. um, that's the main point. And also today, I had vaccinations and uh, kind uh, some things like this. So I helped also with my own hands. Okay. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, leprosy and other diseases have been discussing with the previous guest on, on, on this program. You are watching and listening from a distance. It's, 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 it's something so common in Sri Lanka, Nepal, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, the Gambia, uh, and many other countries. Um, uh, you have so many contacts you, you have to make. Uh, how will you be soliciting support that say, guys, see, this is a serious issue. Let us pump in resources to make this over. Yeah, I hope I can uh, recognize people for that to that problem, and I hope. Who will you be? Who will oh, you be talking okay. to back in Switzerland? I'm not a politician, and I don't have the contacts like uh, Ignacio Castro. Sure, of but course. you have so many people who watch yes, you when you're on television. Yes, but my people are the the how do you say it? the the people in Switzerland. They look what I'm doing. And then they recognize. Okay. That's my main part. Okay. So you have been in Cameroon. I don't know um, which other country you will be moving to. What will you tell them specifically about what you are seeing and how they can help? I will tell them my uh, experiences here, my impressions, and I would uh, tell them that they should um, help with uh, to how do you say, um, give financial um, support to FairMed. Okay, okay, to give financial support to, 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 to FairMed. Do you think that the work that FairMed is doing is, 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 a, is a laudable job? A what? Do you think that what FairMed has already done and is doing is something worth about? Yes, I, yes this is definitely, yes. <laughs> Uh, let me ask you uh, the last question uh, before we separate because my producer is already uh, <laughs> giving me indications that we, we are running out of time. Um, which are those popular television shows, radio stations and newspapers in Switzerland which have a huge uh, viewership, uh, uh, people listen, people read that you are going to target for this information to go what? across? The biggest interview will uh, be showed at Schweizer Illustrierte, and this is very famous in Switzerland, but also 20 Minuten Blick, and uh, maybe there, there are more, I don't know, but there are really many of them. Miss Swiss, Dominic, thanks very much for accepting to be guest on Globe Watch, and this is your first African television you are making an yes. appearance, sure, yes. right? <laughs> yes. We thank you very much for the thank honor. Thank you too. You're welcome. The Paris summit, the summit, the French president said uh, Boko Haram has links with Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb AIQM. Uh, is that information being shared by Scotland Yard or MI6 and MI5? Well, we, we share uh, intelligence information with a whole range of people. I'm not going to get into the detail of that. But there are clearly links. Why? There are, well, be because it's, uh, it's intelligence. <laughs> uh, and uh, it, th there are clearly uh, links, there are, there are, which I think emphasises the importance of uh, the region being involved in a, a finding a resolution to this issue, which is why uh, the Cameroon, Cameroonians are very important uh, in this, why the Chadians need to be involved, the Nigerians, as well as the Nigerians, uh, the United Kingdom, the United States, the French and other uh, multilateral organisations uh, as well. We cannot allow terrorist organisations to destroy normal people's lives, people who want to lead a normal life, people who want to provide for their families, allow their children to go to school, allow them to develop an education and provide for their, themselves in the future. M that M cannot be allowed to... M Mr. To Minister, the Nigerian army is about six million soldiers. But I just wonder how Boko Haram is better armed than a nation described as the oil giant of Africa. Who is financing them and who is selling them weapons? There is no country in Africa that produces weapons. Well, there are, uh, there's no doubt there are significant capacity issues uh, in the... So which are those Western uh, arms industries which are selling weapons to Boko Haram? Well, 
certainly, there, as far as I'm aware, there are no uh, companies in the United Kingdom that sell weapons to both. But certainly, they are in certain European countries. Uh, there, there are no uh, arms manufacturers in the United Kingdom that I'm aware of that are selling weapons to Boko Haram. There is no doubt there are uh, capacity issues in the Nigerian military, and that's one of the reasons why the United Kingdom and others have offered help to enable the Nigerian military to deal with this challenge and this threat. And that's something that we're working on, uh, that's something that will uh, take time to, uh, to put in place. Do you have an idea no. of the charity and other sources of funding where Boko Haram is getting money? Because there is one report by the US State Department which indicates that Boko Haram is basically sponsored by cartels, drug cartels from Latin America and others which are transiting uh, uh, across West Africa. Which are those Western charities which are sponsoring Boko Haram? There is another report which says there is an idea from Saudi Arabia. Well, th there are several ways that uh Boko Haram and other terrorist organisations raise funds. Uh, one is through, for example, kidnapping. The other is through trafficking of arms, trafficking of people. You're right to raise the challenge of narcotics trafficking. And certainly the Sahel region of Africa, and we saw the events that occurred in northern Mali uh, about uh, 18 months ago, uh, there are definitely narcotic trafficking that is going through that part uh, of Africa. So this is a very complex picture, and that's why it's important that the international community, both at multilateral level, so using the United Nations and the European Union, as well as uh, the developed world, the United States, France, United Kingdom, play their part, as well as engaging the region, including Cameroon, as well as Nigeria, in a cohesive, coordinated, joined up effort to make sure that we don't just uh, switch off the sources of finance that fund some of the Boko Haram and other terrorist activity, Pro but we provide, and this is very important, but okay, we provide alternative livelihoods for some of those who choose to join these terrorists. <laughs>